Hello, this is D, and I'm back with another video. And today we have a doozy of a video. Now, Remedy has detailed Alan Wake's 2 PlayStation 5 Pro update. Now, of course, we're going to get a host of new updates with the PlayStation 5 Pro. Now, this game, I was really looking forward to the update. Now, a lot of people were making fun, saying, you know, it was resolving at 854p and it's not worth getting the PlayStation 5 Pro for this but in my personal opinion the uh, PlayStation 5 Pro version of the game is going to offer ray tracing now ray tracing is not available on any of the base consoles so the PlayStation 5 doesn't have it as well as the Xbox Series X now they have a quality mode that runs at 30 FPS that has higher settings and they have a performance mode that runs at 60 FPS now Alan Wake 2 on the PlayStation 5 Pro is going to take it up a notch. Now, I'm going to go over to their site like usual. I'll leave a link in the description down below so you guys can check it out for yourself. And they had a host of updates for the game. Now, I'm going to give you guys the short version right now. You're going to have a 60 FPS mode. You're going to get better image quality. So it's going to have uh, volumetric lighting. It's going to have better shadow accuracy. It's going to be using the image quality that is on the quality mode on the PlayStation 5, but running it at 60 FPS. It's going to be using PSSR to 4K. I believe it's resolving it just a little bit under 1440p, and then it uses PSSR up to 4K. You're going to get higher settings than the base performance mode. So it's just gonna look and run better. Now the ray tracing mode is going to be running at 30 FPS. You're gonna have ray trace reflections, opaque and transparent. You're gonna have a higher base resolution. So the resolution on the ray tracing mode is actually higher than the base resolution that is on the Xbox Series X as well as the PlayStation 5. So people are making fun of the 854P. So what do you think it's running at on the regular PlayStation 5 and the Series X? Obviously, it's going to be a step above on the PlayStation 5 Pro. We're also gonna compare the ray tracing performance over to the PC side. Now, a lot of people, myself included, were saying that it's going to perform like an RTX 4070. Now, the 4070 is the closest estimation that we have because uh, AMD doesn't currently have machine learning and the ray tracing isn't really that good on the uh, RDNA 3 cards. Now, RDNA 4, the ray tracing is supposed to be improved. As well, they're gonna be adding machine learning to their RDNA 4 cards. So, this is a big update for AMD and this is the first GPU that is coming out to support these features and it's coming out on the PlayStation 5 Pro. So like everybody, I'm really excited to kind of dig into this. So this is kind of gonna be a bit of a long uh, video. I'm gonna go over to the site right now, but before I do that, I'm gonna run the Alan Wake 2 PlayStation 5 Pro comparison video that they actually released today of the uh, PlayStation 5 running in quality mode as well as the ray tracing mode. Then I'm gonna come back and we're gonna discuss it.
Now, as you can see from the video, that was some pretty good ray tracing. Now, the reflections, they looked fantastic. And although I'm pretty sure the quality is going to be a little bit lower than PC, obviously, I do believe that they're resolving a great image. It looked really clean and crisp. PSSR is really doing its job. So let's just get into the article. Like I said, I'll leave a link in the description down below so you guys can check it out for yourself. Now, the article goes on to say that Alan Wake 2 is taking full advantage of Sony's PlayStation 5 Pro to enhance the game experience further. Remedy's Northlight Engine team has spent a good amount of time updating the technical uh, details behind Alan Wake 2, with the main new feature of the Pro being the addition of ray tracing. Now, before I go further, I want to point out that the regular consoles, the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X and the Series S, they do not have a ray tracing mode because the hardware is just simply not capable of running the ray tracing that is in this game. Now, this game on PC is very demanding with ray tracing. I've played this game. It's a fantastic game, but it's demanding on the hardware. In order for me to get really good performance, I got to throw on DLSS and I have an RTX 4090. Now, if I want to use path tracing, I'm going to have to turn on frame generation. Now, path tracing, that's a, a whole nother world of ray tracing. And I'm not expecting the PlayStation 5 Pro to do that. I think it's pretty amazing that Nvidia is able to do it right now. But I just got to be honest here, Nvidia, they're going to be ahead of AMD in ray tracing. They've developed this technology for far longer than AMD has been using it. And they're just way ahead on their uh, software, on their pipeline, on their hardware, of their capabilities with ray tracing. So don't expect the PlayStation 5 Pro to have all of the features that Nvidia has on their side. I think it's going to be a huge update to what we've had previously with AMD, but I just gotta tell everybody that so they get their expectations in check. Now, let's go on to the article that says the quality and performance modes in Alan Wake 2 are upgraded on the PlayStation 5 Pro. They utilize Sony's new PlayStation Spectoral Super Resolution PSSR upscaling method. To quote Sony's marketing language, PSSR is an AI-driven upscaler that uses a machine learning-based technology to provide super sharp image clarity by adding an extraordinary amount of detail. Now, the quality mode, the PlayStation 5 Pro quality mode features ray tracing, which isn't available on the base PS5 version of the game. It's going to be at 30 fps with ray tracing ray tracing reflections opaque and transparent output resolution is 4k and render resolution is 1224 or i should say 2176 by 1224 so that's just a little bit under uh 1440p it's kind of a weird resolution but it's gonna upscale it to or i should say it's gonna use pssr to get it up to 4k and from the images that i've seen in the video that we saw earlier and i'm having it playing in the background here as you can see right now it looks like a native 4K image. So that is fantastic. Now, some people saying, oh, it's 30 FPS. That's so unplayable. And I would agree on PC, we tend to want things at 60 FPS, but this game is extremely demanding on the hardware. And to prove that, well, first, you have it running on the PlayStation 5 Pro where it's not available on the regular consoles. So let's just do a quick comparison on PC. Now, this is Alan Wake running with ray tracing ultra settings. We're going to use the 1080p settings because A54P is pretty close to 1080p. Obviously, it's under 1080p, but we're just going to work with what we got here. So a 4090 at ultra gets 71 FPS. Uh, a 4080 super gets 54. A uh, 4080 gets 53.7. A 4070 Ti gets 43.4. As we go down the stack, a 7900 XT gets 20.8. 8 FPS at 1080p ray tracing ultra 79 XT gets 19.1 once again with ray tracing at ultra so the PlayStation 5 Pro is resolving this at 30 FPS and the settings aren't quite ultra obviously it's a step down from ultra so we're going to go further down the uh, GPU comparison graph here, and we see that ray tracing low is put on. Now, this is what the article said. Now, like usual, I'll leave a link in the description down below so you guys can check it out for yourself. But they say dialing it down to ray tracing low gives the card some breathing room. The Radeon RX 7900 XTX nets 47.5 FPS, still slower than the GeForce RTX 4070. 4070 Super and 4070 Ti Super. The 4080 Super posts an average of 82 FPS, second to the only RTX 4090 with 103.6 FPS. Now, as we go down the chart here, let's just go straight down to a 4070. Uh, a 4070 at low is getting about 58.3. Now, I kind of said before that the ray tracing performance, it is going to be better on a NVIDIA card. They just 
have so many generations ahead of AMD. It's just going to be better. It is what it is at that point. But when we compare it to a uh, 7800 XT, which you can also compare the PlayStation 5 GPU to, but it's clocked a little bit higher and has less features, it's getting 34.1 FPS. And that is low ray tracing settings. We know that the PlayStation 5 Pro is not using the lowest preset for ray tracing. So right there, you're seeing that we're getting pretty good performance. Now, I would like to see them unlock the frame rate. If you unlock the frame rate in this game, then we can really see what the PlayStation 5 Pro is capable of. In fact, I think all PlayStation 5 Pro modes should have an unlocked feature. You should be able to just unlock it and let it run at its max with VRR, set it to 120 hertz, and just let the game rip. And I'm pretty sure we are gonna see a lot of games with that mode. Now, I can't confirm if they're gonna do this, but I will say this, it is pretty early days for the PlayStation 5 Pro. I think it's still early days for Alan Wake 2's PlayStation 5 Pro update. I think they're gonna update it further, even before the launch of the title. I think we're gonna get another update. And I think as the uh, PlayStation 5 Pro rolls out, I think before Christmas, we'll probably even see another update for this game. I think a lot of games are going to be getting a lot of updates because this is evolving technology as pssr gets better and better models come out uh the developers they're going to patch their games to support the new models of pssr if any more optimizations can be made developers they're going to patch it into these games so overall i think it's pretty good when we compare it to the pc once again if we compare it to a 7800 xt it is getting 34.1 fps at the low preset of ray tracing which the playstation 5 pro is not doing it's doing a little bit higher if we look at the 4070 it looks to be about i would say a good 15 percent faster at ray tracing if i'm doing the math right if i'm doing it wrong guys let me know in the comment section down below i'm just doing it quickly off the top of my head but it looks like about 15 to maybe 17 percent faster than amd but i said all of that to say this the 30 fps performance that we're getting on the playstation 5 pro is not bad at all it's nothing to be laughed at especially when the regular consoles don't even have that mode available make it make sense and you guys have seen the imagery i've been putting it throughout the video it looks fantastic on the playstation 5 pro with ray trace reflections it's a huge improvement over the regular console now if you don't want to play it at 30 fps uh, then you got the 60 FPS mode where you don't have to deal with ray tracing and you're still getting better settings and performance than the regular PlayStation 5. So it's an extra mode. We can't complain about it. And when we look at PC and we see the metrics and we see the type of GPU you need to get this game running at 60 FPS and the resolution that you need to get it running at 60 FPS, you know that the PlayStation 5 Pro is definitely performing well. Now, there are some differences, like I said, on the way that ray tracing is done and they kind of detail that in this um, article. I don't really wanna go through all of it because it's such a huge read, but we'll just try to get through some of the key moments. Now let's talk about the performance mode. They say 60 FPS using approximately the same render image quality settings as the base PlayStation 5 quality. They're saying that the base PlayStation 5 performance mode version runs at a lower resolution and image quality settings. Uh, the render resolution is 1536 by 864. And this is where everybody kind of lost their mind. Now the output resolution is going to be 4k so if this looks like a native 4k image it doesn't matter to me that it's coming from 864p it really doesn't matter now if you have played dlss on pc you know that sometimes it yields fantastic results better than the native resolution so i think it looks good i'm just gonna wait for digital foundry really to dissect this but for me personally i think it's outputting a 4k image it looks like a native 4K image to me. And they go on to say that the base PlayStation 5 version outputs at 1440p. So you're getting a huge resolution bump from 1440p up to 4K. They go on to say when considering potential options to improve the image quality, increasing the rendering resolution is among the easiest routes to go even if you have enough GPU power. We did multiple experiments including upgrading the 60 FPS performance mode output from 1440p to 4K and adding PSSR which positively impacted the image crispness and stability under motion. Increasing the internal render resolution consumes a lot of processing power no matter how powerful the hardware is. However, in our experiments, even putting all the added power to 
the increased rendering resolution provided a barely noticeable difference in the output image of its quality. Adding more pixels to gain visual quality is not straightforward with the new AI based upscaling methods. So they were saying basically here is that they used a lower resolution and it was still outputting the same quality as a higher resolution within PSSR. So they said it wasn't really worth the resources when it's yielding the same results, which leaves them with more performance to do other things. So this is a good resolve. At least that's how I interpret it. Now they go on to say that being said, there's still a threshold on what resolution image you can feed to the modern upscalers and expect a good quality of reconstruction results. Many different parameters affect the upscaling quality, ranging from the style of content to the choice of rendering algorithms that are used to produce the image and every engine and artistic direction works in different ways. When it comes to Alan Wake 2, it seemed a better idea to improve the signal than we feed into the denoising network rather than trying just to add more data. This led us to improve the rendering quality settings of the pro performance mode, which is closer to what the base PlayStation 5 version quality mode uses. So they're basically saying the 60 FPS mode is pretty much like the quality mode uh, that runs in 30 FPS on the regular PlayStation 5. That is a huge upgrade. That's like double the performance. Now they go on to say these upgraded settings provide the pro version of Alan Wake 2 with a fast response rate combined with a sharper and better quality image that was previously possible. Alan Wake 2 is visually incredibly detailed and rich, which are qualities that make it a tough fit for ray tracing, especially compared to our previous game, Control. Still, we do like a challenge here at Remedy, and if you have a high-end PC with the right graphics card, ray tracing on Alan Wake 2 looks great, and we're happy that we can now bring ray tracing to the Pro thanks to its upgraded hardware. Alan Wake 2 did not feature ray tracing on PlayStation 5, but with the Pro's improved ray tracing features and additional power, we could bring ray tracing to Alan Wake 2's quality mode on the Pro, enabling ray tracing reflections on opaque and transparent surfaces. Visually, Alan Wake 2 contains beautiful crafted scenes and lighting setups that can benefit from ray tracing. Ray trace reflections allow dynamic, indirect lighting to be brought in from the surrounding scenes that are not limited to the using of information only from the main camera view, shading or coarse or static sign distant fields like our screen space techniques. However, ray tracing comes with a cost. Each ray must be traced and it's hit, evaluated and shaded. Due to the nature of ray tracing, multiple rays must be traced to reach noise free images. Unfortunately, tracing and shading multiple rays per pixel is still generally too expensive. We must be able to work with noisy images provided by low sample counts, which means we must remove the noise by denoising. And from here on in, they kind of go into the uh, different techniques that they use in order to get the ray tracing performance that they have on the PlayStation 5 Pro. Now they did take a few shortcuts. So there's a few things that are missing in the BVH that is on PC. So I just got to be honest here, reading their article and just taking everything at face value, some of the uh, ray tracing techniques are a little bit different here. And I'm not quite sure if this is down to AMD or this is just down to the hardware that's in the PlayStation 5 Pro. But there are a few little differences. Now, the end result pretty much looks like what I'm seeing on PC, but I just got to be real technical here. One more thing that was in the article that I didn't really get to go over because it's a long read. And like I said, I'll leave it in the description down below. You guys can check it out. Uh, they did say that PSSR allowed them to denoise the uh, ray tracing image even further. So PSSR has some type of advantage for ray tracing. I don't know if it works similarly to uh, ray reconstruction. I'm just going out on a limb here, but they did say in the article that PSSR did help them with their ray tracing denoising. Now, ray tracing can be very noisy. And I will say ray reconstruction makes ray tracing look so much better on PC. So if Remedy is getting a resolve that's similar to ray reconstruction on NVIDIA, I think this is also a big win for the PlayStation 5 Pro. So let's just go over what we talked about today. Now, it's going to be a 60 FPS mode. It's going to have better image quality. It's going to have better fog. It's going to have volumetric lighting, shadow accuracy. It's going to be a better image than the performance mode on the regular PlayStation 5. It's going to be very close to the quality mode on the PlayStation 5 that runs at 30 FPS. Instead, it's going to be running at 60 FPS on the PlayStation 5 Pro. So you're getting a huge uptick in performance. Now, the ray tracing mode, you're going to have opaque and transparent ray trace reflections at 30 FPS. You're going to be running it at 854p, but it's resolving an image that is close to 4K. I've put the image throughout 
of the video. I'll put it one more time up here so you guys can see it. It looks like a native 4K image. And I'm saying that if it looks like a native 4K image, I don't really care if it's not a native 4K image. I see a lot of people coming out and trying to make fun of PSSR. A lot of PC guys, which makes absolute zero sense to me because on PC, we rely on DLSS for our ray tracing performance. We rely on it for path tracing. In fact, we need frame gen for path tracing alongside with ray reconstruction and DLSS. So no GPU is really getting 4K ray tracing at 60 FPS on state-of-the-art games. This game in particular, I put the benchmarks up, you're seeing that you need a 4090 to get good performance. A 4070 is not cutting it. Basically, you need a 4080 Super, a 4080, or a 4090 to get good ray tracing performance in this game, and you're still going to need to turn on DLSS to get a good frame rate. So when people are trying to say that this 30 FPS resolve is not good, I don't know what to say, especially when we don't even have this mode on the regular PlayStation 5 or the Xbox Series X because the system is just not capable of doing it. So you're getting an extra mode with ray tracing. If you choose not to play it, you still get a 60 FPS mode that is beyond the PlayStation settings, which is beyond the PlayStation frame rate that is available in their uh, quality mode. Anyways, I want to know what you guys think about it. Personally, I think this is a good resolve for the PlayStation 5 Pro. I'm excited to play this game on the console and just see the performance. I hope that they have an unlocked mode so we can truly get a grasp of how powerful the PlayStation 5 Pro is. Now, it running at a lower resolution, but upscaling to 4K running at 60 FPS with higher settings while looking native 4K, I believe is a win. The 30 FPS ray tracing mode is also a win. It's an option. It's an option that was not available on the regular PlayStation 5. Anyways, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. And like I usually say, please like, share, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys on the next one.